I gravitated more towards having a varied skill set. Oh god, did I just make a joke on my name? <laughs> hey, I'm Tom Very. I started a business called Very Sound, which works in cinematography, audio engineering, uh, and also I'm a drummer, that's what I went to school for, but um, my focus nowadays is primarily on uh, music videos and live sound. I never thought about my future. I was just like, I'm gonna do this thing because I like it, and then I'll make it work probably. So I never really uh, doubted that I would be able to make ends meet. It was kind of a toss up between going to school for drums or going to school for marine biology. And um, I stopped doing drum lessons because I kind of got sick of drums for a little while. And then I, something changed in my heart. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna apply for music school instead. And here we are in my garage. I've never felt like the kind of person to work for somebody else. I've really enjoyed making my own timeline, like my own schedule. I've really enjoyed making my own schedule and uh, my own rules to an extent. Uh, I like the freedom that brings about. And um, when I'm mixing, if I'm doing editing and stuff, I can be as precise as I want. And that's on my own timeline. Maybe I'm getting paid the same amount to mix this song, regardless of how much time I spend editing it. but. I feel like that's kind of what my voice is, you know? Like I spend that, the extra day editing that nobody else would, or very few would. I think the path that, that I took um, <clears throat> is like inadvertently me just seeking happiness before I really realized it. Everything I do now is for myself, honestly. I mean, that sounds really selfish. Maybe that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I never, I never really thought too hard about like, what, am, what is gonna make me happy in life? I was more so thinking like, you know, more immediate things. Like I'm just gonna do this thing because in this moment, I'm enjoying it. And, uh, and I'm gonna pursue that. And then over time I realized I've kind of created um, a life where the things that I do, do make me quite happy. Um, I'm really thankful for that. And the people I've surrounded myself with, that I'm working with, also make me really happy. Um, it's a positive, supportive community that I happen to work in. If you're speaking like work-related, I think I feel happiest when Actually, there are two points. It's when I've completed a project and I feel good about it, there's like a huge like sense of satisfaction and pride as well. Um, and the fact that it's something that I can hold on to and I can, you know, it's not, it's, it's not fleeting. It's not a fleeting moment. It's like, I finished this. It took a lot, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of like um, time invested and now it's done. That feels great and I'm happy with it. And then the other side of it is when I'm asked to do a gig. There's like a little bit of a rush when someone reaches out to you and they ask you to f shoot something or to record something or to work with them on something. Um, that sense that this person has asked me because they like my work is, it's, it's a really good feeling. Completing a project and feeling happiness, being asked to do something and uh, feeling validated that someone asked you to do that thing with them. Of course, the process of doing it is also enjoyable. There are just like millions of miniature challenges throughout the whole process. Um, but uh, there's like, yeah, just a bit of a rush at the beginning and at the end that I'm like always striving for. No, if, if I was doing just like a, like a day job that I didn't like and it paid well, I'd be fucking miserable. I think like probably that's a probably pretty common trend. Um, uh, I just I just love what I'm doing because I'm always challenged. There's like there's unlimited potential. 
um, can always learn more. Yeah, every every shoot I do, even if it's a simple shoot, I look back on the footage and I'm like, oh, it could have been, I could have, you know, done this slightly better. Even now that I feel more confident in my abilities, I'm still always looking for approval. Um, it does scare me to think that I would do work for somebody and they just wouldn't be happy with what I produced. Um, because a lot of the time what I'm doing is just a, a representation of my aesthetic or my creative decisions. And if someone doesn't like that, it doesn't feel good, does it? It's, it's like, this is you know how I define myself. So I do often feel like I'm kind of like putting it all out there. No gig is the same, constantly opportunity to learn. And it's a bonus that I'm getting paid for doing something that I love. Any sort of disappointment from my client's end reflects, I, I always look back on myself. I'm like, oh, like, like that. I am a little scared, I guess, of disappointing my client. You know, it's not even so much that they paid me for this, but they chose me because they trusted me. And if I'm not able to deliver, yeah, that just, you know, I really want to try to do the best job possible for whoever I'm working with. My dad had a car audio business. It was called The Audible Difference. And uh, don't laugh at that. It's a really good name. I think the fact that my dad was a, an entrepreneur was more of a subconscious influence on me because um, I never really thought about it, but I just found myself gravitating towards that lifestyle versus working in a company and having a boss. Um, Moreover, he was also um, a man of many different skills, uh, you know, useful stuff like plumbing and electrical and just, he, he just knows a lot of different things. Um, and so I always really respected that. So I think part of the reason why I have a natural affinity to learning different skills is just because that's kind of what I was around growing up. It's kind of a funny thing because there was a point when he asked me like, is taking over my business of any interest to you. And there wasn't any aspect of that that I thought, you know, would bring me happiness or would be the right thing to do. And I wasn't into it and instead thought I was gonna study music and uh, inadvertently ended up going into a similar world where I'm, you know, um, being very critical about sound. So it's not the same, but yeah, it's kind of funny how that worked out. My, my parents aren't uh, necessarily musical. They don't play anything, but um, they both have a great appreciation for music. Uh, my dad especially, owning that car audio business for so many years, he's also an avid collector of vintage hi-fi audio equipment. <clears throat> and so going to music school and then finding myself gravitating towards recording and uh, mixing and post-production, all of a sudden, this is something that my dad and I have in common more so than ever. Of course, I always love music, but it's it's different when it's like your, you know, it's your lifestyle, it's what you're doing for a living. Um, so it definitely brought my dad and I closer together. I think the biggest benefit to having chosen to go to school for music and to Put myself in that community is uh, the people that it inherently surrounds me with. Um, they're very creative and uh, warm and I don't know it's 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 a really special community in Toronto um, and that I'm working with on a daily basis. So drumming has definitely you know led me to where I am now. If I had have instead gone to school for audio production it would be completely different. Um, I, I don't think that anything I've done has really felt like a sacrifice to me. Things just feel like opportunities. Um, so I think sacrifice and opportunity can kind of be opposites. Like, sorry, the same thing, but looking at it in a negative or positive light. So, um, a big part of my lifestyle has been like stretching what I have 
as far as I possibly can. Um, so like where we're doing this interview right now is like my garage, which is freezing cold, like six months of the year. So that kind of sucks, but it saves me a bunch of money, like living in the garage. And now I have a dedicated studio space that I can work in instead of renting out another space. I am also willing to kind of like live a little bit uncomfortably um, and make the most of what I have. Instead of feeling like I'm sacrificing anything, I feel like I'm gaining so much by doing this and kind of enjoying the weird struggles that come with that. It's kind of annoying to be freezing cold and uh, to be breathing in secondhand smoke, but it's also kind of like funny, right? So. My job feels like work sometimes. There are definitely gigs you have to take. Um, I mean, I take almost every gig that is offered to me. And yeah, sometimes it definitely feels like work. But when I'm doing the stuff that makes me happy, it's like the best thing ever. 